stop music all right what's up everybody it is wednesday i do like wednesday you know because it's like one day before the weekend the weekend starts on thursday right <laughs> we used to have a joke when i was at ucla uh they were like it's always thursday because you would start going to the parties on thursday then friday would happen saturday would happen sunday was like recovery and then monday was like oh, maybe go to school or something and then before you knew it, it was thursday again so we used to always, me and my roommates used to always joke, uh, you know, it's always Thursday. Anyways, it's Wednesday today, but um, <laughs> one day closer to Thursday. So that's fun. I'm trying to think. Uh, let's see. Any news? Any stuff that's happened? Uh, bum, bum, bum. Oh, thanks. Yeah, Don helped me figure this out. Actually, I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, if I go to our channel and I go to like, I think it's the about page is what it is. So, why is this so? One sec, very good. Turn this off. One sec, very good. Turn this off. Anyways, um, well, this is infinite gold. So we don't need to see this. But anyway, so yeah, if we go down to here, this is pretty cool. So now there's a calendar here. Uh, nice. that'll say when the next person is live and whatnot. Oh, whoa, what's up, fucka? Fuka? Foka? I don't know, can I say that word? <laughs> uh, what's up? Yo, Demented wants to come and say hi. Demented, what's going on, dog? Hey, I can talk to you, God. How you been? I've been good, dude. How's, how's your, uh, your electronics I hate class? It. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I need to, bro, you know, like, your worst fear came true to me? What was my worst fear? Of missing... Your worst fear being like, oh, a class would so show up on your schedule or some shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like you haven't been yeah, to the class so, at all. Yeah, yeah. It's been seven weeks that I've been going to the wrong class. And I only realized because I went in there to take a test oh, and me. my ID didn't show up. Wait, whoa, whoa, my ID didn't You've been going to the wrong up. class for seven weeks? Seven weeks straight? Ah! I've been taking it, studying it. Bro, you should see the fucking notes I have. I have a stack, a presentation. Wait, wait, notes, you never had everything. like a quiz or something in this class? And someone's no! like, yo, bro, you're not. Oh, wow. Uh -oh. We It went all no. the way up to like the first test. And then like you sit down, you're supposed to find like your name no and everything. Fucking way, dude. I look for it. And then I'm no like, oh, it's not here. So I go up to the teacher. I'm like, oh, here's my idea. I'm like, what? he's like, hey, you're not in this class. I'm like, huh? It's like, what? You're not showing up for me. I'm like, are you kidding? Oh, bro, no, 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 no. Bro, that's like bro, my worst nightmare, me. dude. <laughs> bro. So, and then I see, and it updated because I I took a screenshot of my first day schedule, right? Because uh -huh. it doesn't change. Yeah. But the class was wrong, so I've been going to the wrong room, sitting there vibing. No, no, wait, now, now, how how wrong is it? Is it just the wrong section, or is it like a completely different class? Different, it was a fucking sexual harassment course for gender studies, and I'm supposed oh. to be taking DC electronics, brother. <laughs> oh, bro, those oh, are very two. Different. Different. 
Very, very different. Very, very different classes. <laughs> Wait, what was it? Like, sexual harassment study versus like DC <laughs> circuits? I mean, yeah. oh my god, what the fuck, oh bro? God. Holy shit. Okay, so wait, and, so it, oh. is this why you're freaking out? Because like you have to like somehow yes. pull pull your boots up in I class. Have to, uh, yeah, because I missed an exam and a test there, so I'm like thirty percent is at zero right now. Thirty percent of my grade is kaboot. Uh oh. And I have to somehow catch up in three weeks because that's okay. when our all of our exams are. Okay, classes. it's not impossible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's I would exp I would explain your situation to someone. And be like, yo, I've been going to this class. You know, usually what a teacher what will thinking? do, they'll let you like, for instance, they'll let you have the next test count for double. Like it'll count for both of them. Usually, I don't know. Maybe demented. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. But what's it called? <laughs> Okay, you say. Well, I'm what's sorry. Up? What's up? I'm like, I'm like, you're good. I'm you're good. Out, man. You're good, dude. It's, you're good. I've been trying to catch up, bro, and it's like stressing me the fuck out. It's okay. It's okay. You, it's alright. You didn't murder anyone. You're not going to jail. Uh, you know, worst comes to worst, you just drop the class, right? It's like the absolute worst thing. Um, yeah. But that's even not that bad because. Is you, it really? Yeah, you have a. It's called a withdrawal. You get like a W on your transcript. And if you mm -hmm. ever need to, like, explain that to someone, you literally just say the story mm -hmm. here of, like, I thought I was supposed to yeah. go to sexual harassment class. Turns out I was actually registered for another one. I never went to it. Um, yeah, I was thinking of uh, talking with guidance and seeing if I can move it to next semester. Because next, next semester, I just have two courses. That's it. This one has, like, six uh, six courses, this one, for this semester. And then the next semester, I have two. So if I can move it, where I'd have only four to focus on here and then four to focus on there, I think... I'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. Explain your situation. Most people are humans. I hope. Um, because uh, uh, I don't know, man. My digital, the fucking class I showed you. That teacher is not human. That man's a robot. Yeah, that I guy. I told sucks. him like, oh, I'm struggling. I told him I'm struggling. He's like, oh, you're in danger. You gotta figure this out. I'm like, that's what I'm asking you. Buddy. I'm in danger. <laughs> I'm in danger. I'm Fuck. <laughs> Dude, what a bitch, dude! I hate when teachers are like that. Like, wh like, who, who hurts you, man? Like, what? Why, why? Oh. why they're just being nice to you. It's okay, dude. You'll, you'll, you'll get through it, dude. What is college without a couple bumps, dude? You got, you gotta like, you gotta go through some shit. It's okay. I know, but bro, it, yesterday was such a fever dream as well. I cannot believe, it. like, I it was throwing me off so hard where I wanted to drop the entire thing and just be like, you know, what? I'll just go do welding or some shit. I'll be a tradesman. And then I sit there on the bus, and then someone comes sits beside me. He's like, oh, do you know which way the bank is? Yeah. I'm new to the city. I'm like, oh, oh it's this way. So I I, sh I like, I got off the bus and walked with him. We talked to him. He's like, oh, yeah, I have a PhD in industrial engineering, wow. biomedical engineering. I'm very well known in, like, the aero world. I can help you. Oh, nice. Because I told him I was a biomedical. He's like, I'll get you a free ride for a PhD in uh, King well, Saad University. All, all, oh, King Saad. No, be careful here, dude. Be careful on these like these Saudi princes like promising you things, man. Yeah, no, yeah. not uh, it's not like cold. It's not like he's not a king, but like yeah. the university itself is cold. Yeah, it's called like King Bin Salman, whatever university or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I looked about. it up. It was on Google Scholar. Just to double check, yeah. I've seen his research. No, it's probably paper, legit. Double check everything. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's probably legit. But it's like, damn. Well, now I have this that I can work off. He's like, make sure to call me like every two to three days. Okay. Updating on how you're doing so you can come up with a plan, see how okay. you're doing your courses. I mean, so that's really okay. nice of him. Just be a little bit wary of that. I, I'd yeah, be a little wary of course. Of some dude was like, <laughs> fuck! <laughs> like, hey, bro, I like, you want, <laughs> you want to just call, yeah, call me every two days, dog. Nice. Like, no, call me every two it. days. I'm like, uh... uh what's up, Pokemon Porta? I mean, what's life without taking risks, you know? There you go, bro. Yeah, uh, you know, you, you miss 100% of the shots you don't make, man. So, yeah, take some risks. Just don't end up with your liver gone or something. <laughs> You're like, where'd my kidney exactly go, what dude? My mother said. What's up? Exactly Poker what my mother dude. said. How's it going? It's going great, dude. Nice, yeah. Okay, uh, do you have any questions? Yeah, do you want me to help you with anything? Like, do you have any, like, homework um, questions you want me to help you with? Um, math, I'm, do I'm fine with because we're doing greatest common factors. It's just well, like that's a basic, easy shit. You know, GCF, you do GCF. Yeah, dude. that's super easy. Nice. Yeah, All it's right. pre calc. I have to take pre calc before I get to a calculus because technically my math skill was not good. Sad life. So I have to take pre calc first. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, vectors <laughs> fucked me up last week. Oh my god. Okay. 
Well, if if you want some help with them not fucking you up anymore, dude, you know what you know what to do. Yeah, we can help you up. Of course. Nice. Everything else is good in life. Yeah. Besides. The, oh yeah. Besides the nightmare. Besides this huge fucking nightmare. <laughs> yeah, everything else is pretty good. You'll get through it, dude. Don't worry, dude. Don't worry. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, I got through high school with those fucking hiccups. There you go, dude. You'll get through college. Through you can get through anything. Yeah. And it, honestly, like, the more shit that happens, I always say that, like, people who have a difficult life and are tested constantly are meant to have an interesting life. It's better than being bored and everything going right. You'd be like, what? Yeah. Like, excuse me? Like, you can't challenge me enough, life? Come on, dog. Yeah. Throw, me, then... throw me a real hit. <laughs> I open up TikTok and I just see fucking engineer students crying about the courses. I'm like, oh god, no, don't remind it's, me. It's okay, dude. You'll get through it. <laughs> Climb the corpses, find some friends. Is there any chance I can get help with my algebra homework? You can, Ninja. So, Ninja, the best way for you to get help with your algebra homework is to uh, join our Discord. And then there's a channel there called Help Screenshots. And if you post me a screenshot of what your homework question is, I can do it for you. Um, otherwise, you can type it out on Twitch. It's just like sometimes harder to get. Uh, yeah, I, I can help at any level. Well, up to, like, complex analysis. Like, I'm really good at calculus. Diffy Q I can do a little bit. Um, linear algebra. And then all the way down to middle school. Everyone knows what's up. Yeah, I think we just got hit with a ton of... I already got 15 viewers already. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Demented. I got to help some kids with some questions. It's always good to hear from you, though, man, dude. Uh, let me know how that yeah. stuff in college is going. Cool? Of course, of course. All right. I'll head out, let you do your teaching. Cool. Always good to see you, dude. Appreciate you. Bye, bye, right. man. All right. Enjoy. Peace. All right. Welcome to Urban Office Hours. My name is Dr. Cole. This is Actual Education, the stream that helps you with math homework, science homework. Nice. All sorts of fun stuff. Yes. Go find our Discord. It's 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 the easiest way, you know, because like here, I'll show you guys. Like we we have a whole we have a whole channel here. You can only post pictures, by the way, in this channel, just to like clear all the garbage that you know of whatever tech stuff that usually happens in Discord. Um, what's the, ch it's called help screenshots. It's, it's literally, wait, where is it? It's, it's right here. It's like a little cute little help thing and whatnot. Yeah, it's called help screenshots. Um, and then this is where people post their homework questions and then I'll go through them. Usually I go through an order. Um, but if you're a first time student, I'll give you a little bit of a priority cause you've never gotten help from us and you know, you don't have to wait around in an hour. Um, but yeah, cool. Uh, good. I got questions from 1K. I got questions from Equity. Micah, uh, which one do you need help with? Micah, by the way. Uh, I know... I, 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 yeah, I helped you with the... You know... You've, you you got cleared up with the Part D and Part E, right? For the domain and range stuff for the, the profit? Or did you still need explanations with that? Rude question. Do you know if Penn Center is streaming a scheduled? Uh, he should be. Uh, according to the schedule. Awesome. Nini, Nini, Panini, you posted it. Nice. Okay, Crystal, there you go. Cool. All right. I understand the one you explained now. Okay. What's up, Mika? Do you need help with the other one? Yes. Okay, here. Let me help Mika real quick because Mika asked, like, right at the beginning of the stream. And then, um, Crystal, since you're a new student, I will I will answer yours right after. Is that cool? All right. Uh, Mika, wh what's, what's going on here? Like, what do they want? Do they want you to graph this? What, what's the question? You know, I, I see that there's a function. That's cool. <laughs> but what do they want? They, what do they what do they want you to do with it? <laughs> like uh, Mika wants to speak. All right, cool. Come up to stage. Yeah. Also, uh, if you want to interact with me without it and, and I'm doing your question without any lag, it's easier in the discord stage because Twitch has like a three second delay. If you're just watching on Twitch, totally cool. You know, you don't really care about the, the delay. But if we're interacting, it's easier for it to be quicker on Discord. And plus, you can come on the stage. You can talk. What's up, Mika? Is your mic working? Hi. Yeah. How's it going? Um, I'm good. Nice. So, I have a test tomorrow, and I'm just really confused about, um, about this. even in odd functions. Okay. Like, Very verifying cool. it algebraically. Sure. And what confuses me is when... Um, it's like an x-intercept form, or like in factored form. This is in factored form. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you're probably worried about, like, what is the, the highest power of x, I guess, right? Because that's how you determine whether something's even or odd. Or, like, um, you have to do, like, f of negative x. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that stuff. And then yeah. negative f of x. Okay. Yeah, totally cool. So, yeah, so in order for something to be even, right... That means that it's symmetric about the, um, what is it, the x equals zero axis, right? The y axis. 
Mm -hmm. um, so whatever you plug in for X here should get you the same value for plugging in negative X. Okay. Mm. Does that make sense? That's why they say, for instance, like yeah. F of X is equal to uh, F of negative X. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it were odd, okay, let's say it was this, then whatever I get here should be the opposite on the, the negative X side. So this would be, this would be negative F of negative, F of negative X, right? Or, or negative F of X is really what this is. Negative F of X is the same thing as uh, F of negative X. Because this right here is negative X. You let me know if, if any of this is confusing. I, I know, it, it is like kind of confusing. You're just like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, okay, but testing this. So I could tell you right now, this looks like it's going to be odd. Um, although these cross terms are going to do some weird things. So we got to look at that. Um, so let's see. So what you can do, so you know this is f of x, right? This is already f of x, right? Mm -hmm. negative, negative 3x, x minus 2 squared, x plus 2 squared. So good. This is f of x. So then we're going to plug in negative x to get what f of negative x is. And so here, I'm going to I'm going to take this whole thing, but I'm going to change the colors. Uh bum, bum, bum. here, let's make this f of negative x. Okay. So anywhere I see an x, we're just going to replace it with negative x, okay? okay. So this is going to be and I'm going to put parentheses around things cuz it kind of helps me. I can put negative x there. I can put another negative x here, right? And then I can put another negative x here. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's try to simplify this a little bit, okay? So negative 3 times negative x, that's, those negatives are going to cancel, right? So that's just going to be positive 3x. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is weird. <laughs> so this is, now this is negative x minus 2 squared. And then this is uh, negative x plus 2 squared. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, bum, bum, bum. Uh, negative x minus x and negative x plus, negative x plus minus 2. I mean, we could plug in a value, but I get it. I want it, I want it to look exactly the same. Okay, I know what I'm going to do here. It's actually kind of cool. All right. Because uh, I'm trying to get this to look like this, but with either a minus out in the front or a positive out in the front. Right? Mm -hmm. So what I notice is I don't like having negative X in front of things. So I'm going to pull a negative one out of the entire thing. All right. So let, let, let's show how that works. So I'm we can leave the same 3X here. Okay. Jeff says divide. Yeah, dividing is the same as factoring, I guess. Right. It's kind of what it is. I'm going to pull a negative one out, okay? And then I'm going to multiply that all by now, which is going to be x plus 2, right? And all of this is squared. Do you see how I did that? Do you see how I pulled, I pulled a negative one out of both of these things? Yeah, you factored out the negative, right? Yeah, because I, I just don't like negative x, because this, this is just x just chilling, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All right, let's do the same thing here. So if I pull negative one out of this... That's going to give me um, x minus 2, right? And then all of this is squared. Okay? <laughs> now, here's a cool thing. If I have something squared, if I have something times something squared, I can, like, apply the, the squaring to each thing, like, individually. So this is the same thing as 3x times negative 1 squared times x plus 2 squared times uh, negative 1 squared. Move it down. Times x minus 2 squared. Yeah? <laughs> and then what's negative 1 squared? 1. It's 1. So this goes away. This goes away. And I'm just left with, um, what's that? 3x, x plus 2 squared x minus 2 squared. Then you can just flip the order of them, right? So I could say that I want to do the yeah. x minus 2 squared first. x plus 2 squared. And look at that. Comparing this to this, what does that tell you? Is that even or odd? Odd. It's odd. 
Yeah. Because plugging in negative X gets me the opposite of what I originally had. Ooh. Do you see? Yeah, do you see that? What confuses me is when you're trying to make sure it's odd. Because for me, there's uh -huh. a, a way that it can be even, odd, or neither. So even if it's not even, it, it can also be neither and odd. So you have to check sure. both. Yeah, you can check so that. So that. That's if they're completely different. Um, yeah. The example for that would be, let's say, for instance, we had, uh, what do I want to do? Okay, let's say I had three um, X minus two, uh, or let's just say this. Let's just say I have uh, X minus two squared plus two, okay? Let's say this is F of X, all right? And then uh, I'm going to check. I'm going I'm to I'm check the, the, the F of negative X to see what we get, right? So that's going to get me negative X minus two squared plus two, right? And I want to make this kind of look like this, right? But this is the thing that's, that's different. So let's just try to pull it out, right? So I'm going to pull out the negative one like this, negative one. And then this is going to become <laughs> weird, right? But then, now this becomes X plus two, all squared plus two, right? And like before, when I, when I pull this out and square it, this is just going to go away. So you're just left with x plus 2 squared plus 2. Do you see how these things aren't even, they're not the same, definitely, right? And they're also mm -hmm. not just opposites by a negative. Like one is x minus 2 squared and one is x plus 2 squared. Mm -hmm. This is where they're neither. Uh... If you, if you want to know, like, graphically why that is, anything that's not symmetric w will never be even or odd, okay? So... If we remember from, uh, what is it, like transformations, like w what's the parent function? Have you done parent functions and transformations yet? Uh, yeah. Right. So this looks like y equals x squared, except it's got some stuff going on to it, right? What does this minus 2 to do, it, do to it? A little review. Uh, it's okay if you don't remember, because <laughs> I know. <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what the plus two does? This just moves it up two units, right? Yeah. This is just up. And then what this does is this moves it to the right, okay? So instead of being a nice symmetric U like this, this, this U gets moved up, which usually is okay. For even or odd, this is usually fine, okay? But then this gets moved to the right, okay? Um. Now all of a sudden, it's not symmetric about this axis at all. So mm -hmm. it can't be even and it can't be odd. It can't be either of them. Okay. Yeah. When I saw this at first, I thought this might be a neither because anytime I see this happening, it means there's a shift going on. And uh, usually shifts horizontally will screw up any even or odd thing. The exception here is that whatever the shift is that's happening here is also happening on the other side as well. It's happening on the negative two and the plus two. So when you shift both of them, you end up still having something that's symmetric. Mm, but that, okay. but you, don't, you don't need to know that. Uh, I'm just giving you a little context. This is what you have to know. You have, you, have to plug, you have to plug in negative x and just see what you get. And try to make it look try, like the other thing. Uh, yeah, what's up? Can, can you try if, um, doing negative f of x using that equation? Because that's where I get confused. So, so, this, so this is, so look at this. So f of negative x is the same thing as f of x, but it has an extra negative on it. So this is negative f of, neg uh, of x is what it is. Like, so, so look, because f of x, right, is negative 3x, x minus 2 squared, x plus 2 squared. Yeah, I shouldn't be saying, is it, is, well, this is like, are they equal? Are they equal? And then the answer here is like, no. That's why it's not uh -huh. even. But because they're off by a minus sign, right? That means that this whole thing, right, is negative f of x. Because it's whatever this is, just with an extra minus on it, which came up, which is from the outside. That's why it's off. So if you're, yeah, so if you're doing negative and then bracket, and add that function, 
Would uh-huh. you distribute the negative into like everything? You do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, you would distribute the negative into everything, but you can just have it just cancel right here and then it's done. Mm-hmm. The negative doesn't keep hitting everything that's getting multiplied, right? Oh, if so I, it just if, hits the, the first right, one? Right, right. If I have three times four times two, right? This is 24, yeah? If, if, if mm-hmm. I multiply a negative, right? I don't do negative three, negative four, negative two. Right, I just do. Well, this is a bad example because it's odd. Okay, one second. Let me let me do this one. This is what I meant. Okay, three times four is twelve, right? Mm-hmm. If I multiply that by a negative, that becomes negative twelve. If I made this negative and made this negative, then that would be negative three times negative four, which would equal positive twelve, which is wrong. Right? Uh, that, that doesn't work. Yeah. So, so when then, you're distributing and it's like a mm-hmm. x x minus something, you only Distribute the negative into the first term. Well, if you have three things multiplying by each other, then you only distribute it. You can distribute it into either one you want, but you have you only put it into oh. one of them, right? Okay. So, but you are, but no, no, you're you're right here. If I had x, mi- let let's say let's say this. Let's say I had um, let's say I had f of x was equal to um, x minus four. Okay, let's just say just like that, right? then negative f of x, right, would be negative x minus 4. In this case, the, the negative does distribute to both things because they're just being added. And this becomes negative x plus 4. Here, Mika, the, these things are being multiplied by each other. I know there's some, there is some addition and subtraction happening inside one of the things that's, that's being multiplied. But in, in general, if, if you have like, I like using boxes. Jeff is always like, what's with the boxes, dog? But I'm just like, cool, look, I got, I got all these different boxes and they're all, they're all multiplying by each other. Don't even look what's inside. Uh, <laughs> the, the negative only hits one of these things because they're all being multiplied. If all of these things were being added to each other, then it would hit every single thing. Does that make sense? So if it was one big bracket, it would go into everything. If it was one big bracket and there was a plus and a minus between everything, right? Which would be mean. So if there was this and then there was 3x plus x minus 2 squared plus x plus 2 squared, then yes. Then a minus here would come in and hit everything. But this is not going to happen. I guarantee you teacher's not going to do this to you. I guess this is just weird. (laughs) Yeah? A little more clear? Yeah? yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, if you have any other examples you want um, before your test... Oh, uh, what's up, Raiden? Good to see you. Um, just, just send the screenshots. And also, I, I know sometimes the stream goes late. Uh, what time... Is your test tomorrow morning or what? Uh, yeah, tomorrow morning. Okay. If you have any other questions while you're going through stuff, just post them and help, help, help screenshots. And if you're not still awake, I'll still do them. And then you'll see okay. them in the morning or whatnot. Um, so they help you Thank out. Thank you. Okay. You're very welcome, Mika. Thanks for asking. Thank you. Good luck on your test. Thank you. Well done. Well done. What up, Raiden? Raiden in the his house. What's up, dog? Okay. Uh, Critical says yes. Can we do the C plus plus? I want to. I do. Yes. Let me get. Let me get through um, some of the other questions that have been asked. And then yeah, we'll 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 load up a C plus plus compiler. I don't have to teach anyone later tonight, so I'm good. I got time. Yeah, we'll do one of them. I'm, I'm gonna have some fun doing some C plus plus. What's up, Cosmic? C plus plus question. That, that, that's dope. Yes. Yeah, we'll do some C plus plus later. Uh, okay. Let me see. Crystal has a question. Uh, awesome, Crystal. Crystal, do you you can come on the stage if you want to talk. I know it's you know some people are kind of hesitant if they're if there's first it's their first time. Like who's this stranger? <laughs> but if you want to, let me know. Or you can just type. Typing is fine too. You go on stage. Fuck yeah, let's do it. All right, here we go. If you know how Discord stages work, awesome. Yo. What up, Crystal? That, that's dope. What's up? How'd you find us, Crystal? You were just on like the Twitch homepage or what? Uh, yeah, I was on Twitch and I was scrolling to find someone to help me with homework. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Well, we got you, bro. Nice. 
Um, that's dope. I'm glad. I'm glad the algorithm's working effectively and not just sending you like videos of people in hot tubs eating Tide Pods. Right. <laughs> just that was what? I don't. <laughs> Didn't they have a hot tub stream category on Twitch for a while? And then I think they got rid of it because they're like, we can't do this anymore. I think so. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna put this in the in the chat for everyone else who maybe found us on Twitch. So if you use exclamation point math streamers, these are also some awesome math streamer friends of ours that also do free help on Twitch um, throughout the week. So I stream Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, but sometimes kids need help on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or something. One of these guys is probably streaming as well. Um, and then here I'm gonna show you the schedule. Math streamers sketch streamer schedule. We made, we made a cool little website here um, that you can find out at any time during the day when someone is streaming. So right now, uh, Penn Center, my other friend, is doing physics. I, I, I also teach physics, but he's doing specifically just physics. Uh, and then this is the schedule of all the streams that are happening. So Don's another cool guy. He does math. He's streaming tomorrow morning. Zach's in the afternoon. Eric's Friday morning. And then Zach's taking over again Saturday and stuff. So if you guys need help, it's free. Um... Use it. Okay, here. Which one do you need help with? All of them? Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I just okay. started learning this stuff, so... It's okay. Yeah, we'll go over it. Um, where's the schedule? Where's the schedule? Okay, one second. Let me get the schedule for everyone. One sec. It's, it is an announcement. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Nightbot doesn't work in Discord Cosmic. My bad. That's the calendar. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, in an early activity, you saw a function representing the area of a square and another function, re the revenue of a tennis camp. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, refer to this <laughs> function. <laughs> tennis camps and squares. Here's a graph that represents the function A, A equals S squared, where S is the side length in centimeters. Cool. Name three possible input-output pairs of this function. Okay. Do they just mean, like, coordinates? Uh, I have no idea. Are you have no idea? Really it's totally cool. About, like... Inputs we could use. Okay, so uh, these are called functions. You've probably heard of this word, right? Functions before? Functions? Yeah. Okay. Here's what functions look like big and scary and whatnot. Um, I like to think of them as uh, a microwave. You know, you like you put shit in the microwave and the shit comes out of the microwave. A microwave? Yeah. Actually, I, I did a yeah. whole TikTok. It's, I think it's yeah. one of my most famous TikTok. A lot of, I know a lot of people also find us from TikTok. But uh, I have a whole video on, yeah, this Here's is my video on, like, function. how to understand like functions in math. And I do it as, like, a and microwave. An input and create so, input. Just like <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll link that so you can watch it later. It's, it's hilarious. But, yeah, I do a lot All of, right, I will. A lot of yeah, if you want, like, some non-brain rot TikTok stuff, I make, I make fun little videos on math. <laughs> uh, but anyways, functions are like a box, okay? And so what they do yeah. is they take an input, okay, which is usually X. And then they give you an output, okay. which is usually Y, okay? Sometimes these things are written yeah. as weird stuff. Here, here, for instance, they're saying our function is A of S is equal to S squared. I don't know if your teacher's trying to be clever with ass, but, like, that's, that's funny, I guess. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, that's, <laughs> that's, that's clever. <laughs> Very clever, teacher. You get points. Uh, okay, so... A of, what this means, usually it's this. Usually it's f of x is what we say is equal to y. This is the input, and then this is the output. Okay? Yeah. So when they say a of s is equal to s squared, what that means is if I put in a value for s, I'll get out a value for y, which is equal to s squared. Okay. Um, and this is also equal to A. They say this is, so in this case, this is A. And you can see this here on the graph, right? They use this as the x-axis, which is S, and they use this on the y-axis, and they're calling it A? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so when they say input-output, they're saying uh, if I put in a number here, I get an output here. That That's called a, a an input-output pair. It, it's also the same thing as just okay. a point. It, it's just a point on this graph <laughs> is all it is. I'll show you okay. why. So one one possible pair you could have so would be uh let's say here, right? Zero, comma, zero. You have you done points before? Do you know this is like the x coordinate, this is the y yes, coordinate? I have. Good, okay, cool. So yeah. this is when x is zero or s is zero, 
a, which is y, is also equal to zero. That's that's the that's a pair. Um, yeah. I'm trying. To, there aren't really any other nice ones. I mean, there's this, right? So, we have this pair as well, which is when x is equal to three. So when x is equal to three, or s is equal to three, what is what is the y value? The y ten. It's close to ten. Okay, but then let's let's look like. right. Let's look at the function right. We know whatever the y value is, right? This this is the y value, is equal to whatever the x value was squared. Yeah. So if I put in three for x, what am I going to get out for y? Hold on. You're good. Three for Take x. Seconds. My bad. I'm a little slow. You're good, dude. No, no, you're fine. Take your time. <laughs> this is the problem with class because teachers just like rush through shit, and then you're like, I don't get it. No. <laughs> I know, right? And then you're like three lessons behind. And then it just keeps building up because math is unfortunately uh, yeah. cumulative. It's not like history, bro, where you're just like, okay, George Washington had six teeth, nice. Uh, and then you can forget that shit, and then, <laughs> and then you're just learning about I don't know the Civil War or something. Like everything's related in math, unfortunately. Yeah. It builds on it. Wow. All right, it's a pain. Um, here, I'll show you. So let's pretend that this graph is just y is equal to x squared. Okay? Okay. That's the same thing as what they're saying, which is that a is equal to s squared. But I think students, some this, like, looks easier to them. Um, so if I plug in yeah. a value for x, I do some math, and then it'll give me a value for y. That that's all a line or a curve is. It's it's telling you if you put this in for x, this is what you oh, get okay. back for y. So if I put in three for x, what should I get back for y? I a number. <laughs> you get a number. It's good. So if this is three, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's three squared, yeah. right? Because it was x squared. Nine, and then no. three squared is nine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good job, dude. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Okay, not not bad. All right, so g give me give me another pair, right? Give me a number and then what the output would be, like the x and then the y. Uh, you pick uh, whatever you five want. Five and five and the twenty-five. Nice. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, five and twenty-five. Yeah. yeah, you're getting it. All right, dope. Okay. All right. It says earlier we described the set of all possible input values of a as any number that is greater than or equal to zero. How would that describe the set of all possible output values of a? Okay. This is this is like big fancy math language, which is annoying. All right. Right. Yeah. Because you're like, what's this like gibberish? <laughs> uh, <laughs> basically, what they're saying is is okay when they say the set of all possible input values. This is just fancy math language for, like, I'm just going to tell you what values of X you're allowed to put in. Okay? And yeah. they're saying it has to be greater than or equal to zero. Right? So that means in my function here, right, what I put in for X can mm -hmm. only be greater than zero. So I'm only allowed to do this. I'm not allowed to do any negative numbers. Like, no negative numbers for X. Yeah. Okay. So if, if I'm only allowed to put in positive numbers... For x, what what output values is that going to give us? Like what what range? I guess do you see maybe uh, zero to infinity. Good. Yeah, yeah. It's going to give us zero up to infinity. Exactly. So yeah. the set of all possible output values. Yeah, exactly. Is zero to infinity. Yeah. That's also called the range. Have you learned domain or range yet, or is this like the 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 prequel? Nah. Okay. Yeah. So, just a little like little preview. When you describe what the um the allowed x values are, that's called the domain. Okay. And then the allowed y values that come from those allowed x values, that's gonna be called the range. Okay. Yeah. Just a little like it's it's like a sneak peek because. It'll come up, and things make more sense if you've kind of seen it before. You'll be like, oh, I kind of get this already. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, car. Yeah. All right. We got another function here, which is r, r of n is equal to 40n, where n is the number of campers. Is 20 a possible output value in this situation? What about 100? 
explain your reasoning. That's kind of cool. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll describe this. Oh, so, so oh. you got function here, right? Which is 40 N. And so if you put in values, right, yeah. uh, for N, which also is like X, then you're going to get output values of R, which is also kind of like Y. All right. Okay. So let's see what happens. So if I put in one for N, what would I get back for R? One for n. Mm -hmm. Let's remember that r I'm is sorry. equal to. F it's it's okay. Let's remember that r is equal to forty times n. So wait, wait, wait. So that one more time. So if I if I plug if I plug in one for n, what do I get back for r? Uh, forty one n. No, no, you get four t because it's forty times one. Uh yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all good. It's, it's uh, not 40 plus oh, okay. n. It's 40 times n. Not bad. Not bad. No, it's okay. No, no. Oh. You see how that's 40? Okay, what if you plug in 2? Yeah. What would you get if you plugged 80? in 2 for n? You get 80, good. Okay, what about 3? Yeah. That gets you to... Oh. If you plug in 3, it's 3 times 40. Oh. Uh, 120. 120. Nice. Nice, nice. 120, okay. So, yeah, do you see a trend yeah. here? I'm plugging in numbers, right? They're saying, is it possible for you, for you to yeah. get 20? Like, we already showed, right, with, with, with zero. Well, with one, you get 40. Two, you get 80. Three, you get 120. Right? Yeah. Zero, you would get zero, right? If I just plug in zero, I get zero? Yeah. Okay. So, we have zero. All right, let me use different colors for this. Okay, so we got zero, 40, 80, 120. And they're asking, is it possible to, to get 20 for R? So does it look like okay. we could get 20 at this point? No, because no. we're going up. Well, we're going up, right? And then 20 is like in between these two numbers, I right? Mean, yeah. You might see there might be a way for it to happen, right? right. How, how could I maybe get it to work? Divided by half. Uh-huh. So... If I were to put in half in, good, n. good. If you put one half in for n, it would work. Yeah. What's what's the problem about yeah. one half in terms of like the real life situation here? What does n represent? A camper. Number of campers. Can you have we half a camper? Really get half a per yeah. No. No. N not without like some serious legal re re repercussions. Yeah, you can't have half a camper. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's up, Ivan Neo? Never seen Ivan Neo before. Thanks for the raid, dude. Let us know what 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 stream you're doing, where you're from, what's up, Ivan raid. Yeah, what does Ivan do, dude? Ivan, I've never met you before, man. What's up, dude? Let me give let me give Ivan a shout out. Ivan. Ivan, yeah, there we go, nice. Thanks, Ivan, for the raid. Quick intro to everyone uh, who, who just came in. Uh, my name's Docs Girl. This is Actual Education. We're a nonprofit that helps kids with math and science. So if you need help with your homework, anything middle school up through college, math or science, we help you live here on the stream. Uh, and so we're working um, right now with Crystal on some math and science stuff. Ivan is awesome. Oh, Globus. Oh, what's up, Globus? Let's go. I know Globus. Globus is my favorite uh, crypto crypto king talker guy and AI stuff. Yeah, you got some cool stuff. I, I like you, Globus. We were discussing Boltzmann brains and quantum mechanics. Oh, my God. That's a little bit more complicated what? than what we're going through here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have a PhD in physics, so, like, I have some sort of knowledge of that stuff. Yes. But, yeah. Uh, Crystal, I think you're, you're in high school right now, right, Crystal? Or is this middle school? I don't know what this is. Yeah. Yeah, high school. Uh, it's advanced middle. This is advanced middle school, so we'll get to the Boltzmann brains. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. awesome. Appreciate you guys coming in. Um, let's yeah, let's keep working on this. So right, so twenty is not possible because you can't have half a camper. No. Can't be cutting campers in half. Yeah. And then what about a hundred? Is a hundred possible? No. No. Well. Well, well, look. So a hundred, a hundred is where, right? A hundred is nestled somewhere in between here, right? 
Yeah. So it's somewhere between two and three campers, which again, we're not going to be cutting campers in half right now, so we can't do that. Not allowed. Yeah, right now. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so that's what you say. You say it's not possible because you can't have half a camper. Okay. 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 All right, let's go to part B here. Here are two graphs. Oh, well, I see one graph. Uh, the, okay, that oh that relate the number of students and the camp revenue in dollars. Which graph could represent function R? Explain why the other one could not represent the function. Well, I only see one graph. Is there supposed to be a second graph over here? Uh, no, I think they're just yapping about that. Oh, it's just oh 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 sorry. These are both the same graph. Oh uh, oh, I see, I see, I get it. Oh, now. They I, get, are? I get, I get it. Oh, they are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. So this and this refer to this question. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. All right. So they're saying this graph and this graph, and they're saying which could represent the function R. Okay. So basically, which thing okay. takes into account the fact that we can't have parts of a student? You know. Okay. Yeah. The, the other, the fancy word for this is again. I'm gonna say like the fancy words, so you just at least you've seen them before. Is called being discreet, or discretized. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. Discreet means things only happen in certain like chunks, like one, two, three, four. Instead of being like one point one, one point two two two, or one point three three three, like you can't have fractions of things. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So they have yeah. two graphs here. We have this one, right? This this is called being continuous, okay? Because do you see yeah. it allows for any value of x, right? I could have this be my value for x, and I would get a value for y. It's actually kind of cool here, right? Remember, okay. this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. You can kind of see right here, right, that if we had a half... Uh, we would probably be at 20, but this is the other big one. This is this. Do you see how right in between 2 and 3, I, I get the 100 that I wanted? Yeah. Yeah. So this graph allows you to have portions of a student, which is wrong. No. Don't sue me. Um, this, however, <laughs> right, this is not a line. Do you see how these are individual points? Yeah. Yeah. So this fits more our data set of only allowing there to be whole numbers of campers because it says on on the data here right if i have five students i get two hundred dollars but i'm not allowed to have in between five and six i have to jump next to six because these are individual points oh. yeah does that make sense okay yeah yeah cool all right um good job on everything nice hope that um <laughs> Helps you out with what's coming on. Thank I'm you gonna. So much. You're very welcome. I'll I'll send you a screenshot of all this so you can have it. So one sec. Uh, well yeah. well nice. And yeah, if you ever have any other questions with your you know classes and whatnot, we stream three times a week. Just come yeah. on by, post screenshots, get help. Yeah, cool. I'll come back. Don't worry. All right, cool, awesome. Have a great rest of your day, dude. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Me too. Sweet. Okay, cool. Um, sorry, let me catch up on chat. Crypto Keck, <laughs> Keck W. <laughs> what is Bitcoin at these days, dude? What, what what is she at? What's what's our girl doing? What's she at? What's the Bitcoin price? Sixty six. Okay, okay, sixty six point nine. Nice. That's going up. All right, all right. Got a little bit of a oh, that's not good. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, oh man, she's been all over the place this year, hasn't she? I used to like during COVID. I had a, a lot of graphics cards just from like building gaming PCs, and I did mine a fair amount of ethereum which i haven't touched i just i just mined it because i was like whatever like um uh 1k says can you do my question i gotta go in 30 minutes yeah sure i got you bro gold do you recommend investing in bitcoin no, no. i do not do not recommend that <laughs> uh i i always say you should only invest in things you can understand i don't think many people understand bitcoin uh that's why its value is kind of all over the fucking place uh, how do you mine? You can't really do it. It's not as, as effective anymore. Um, but you used to be able to use graphics cards to do, um, I think they were like floating point calculations. I forget exactly how they worked, but whatever. I would use, I would use this app. I think it was called, uh, Etherminer. I think this was it. Uh, Ethermine. Yeah, this is what I, I used to use a, a mining pool. 
Yeah, okay, this is, they say the era of mining is over. Yeah, this got screwed because of, uh, what was it called? The move to staking? You guys probably know better than I do the, the crypto stuff, but... Yeah, back in the day, you, you, before some Ethereum whatever update or something, you, you used to be able to mine Ethereum with your, um, with your video cards. There's a stock market game for DECA. What stock should I invest in? Uh, also, I don't really know. <laughs> we had a stock market game uh, when I was in middle school. And uh, I ended up investing everything, I think, in, like, American Airlines and, like, Delta and whatnot. And then that was also the year 9-11 happened. Ma! <laughs> so <laughs> I got, like, dead last in my class <laughs> because all the airline stocks just went down. Most crypto, yes, I agree, Globus. Yes, thank you. Yeah, most crypto is a rug pull scam. Yeah, or it's a, you know, just they're just trying to see who gets caught with the bag. Um, NFTs were a great example of this. NFTs, like, I, I appreciated the, like, I, as an artist, I appreciated the idea behind N NFTs. Like, you know, still crediting the artist, creating uniqueness, blah, blah, blah. But it ended up, ended up just being a fucking Ponzi scheme for people to just unfortunately take advantage of not so well-informed people in the crypto community and then just just milk them no yeah not so nice yeah no on tesla <laughs> yeah tesla is another uh tesla is almost like a crypto in that it is such a cult stock at this point because its valuation is like out of control it, it if you look at valuation to earnings to revenue it's just nuts like it's it should not be as high as it is but because the cult of musk props it up it it is so yeah don't if you want to invest in stocks, uh, invest in the fucking S&P 500. Just get some nice ETF that's just tied to the S&P 500 and just let it run. Uh, you won't make the 10x for your Lambos and stuff, but uh, it, it'll at least be a steady return. Okay, NVIDIA? No! No, no, no. NVIDIA is another overvalued stock, honestly, and I think they, they had a comeuppance recently on it. Um... Yeah, ask one of the guys. Ask Globus or Ivan in the chat. They probably know more about finances and investing than I do. I, I, I don't have any money to invest. All my money goes to you guys, so. <laughs> Index funds is right. Yes, thanks. Yeah, I, Ivan agrees with me. Index funds, yeah. Go invest in gold, dude. Gold's been doing great, dude. What? <laughs> Speaking of colors I love, right? Uh, I think gold's at like an all-time high right now, right? Oh, oh, it crashed. But for a bit, it was it was way up there, dude. I remember gold... Yeah, look for the last 15 years. Gold's been, like, spiking like crazy, dude. Yeah. Gold's been doing great. Oh, your degree's in physics, too? That's awesome, Ivan. What'd you get your degree in? What, what, what specialty? Also, 1K, which one do you want help with? Uh, I'll do the C++ afterwards. Is that cool, Critical? Yeah? And then, because then I just got equities, and... Oh, Mike has another quick question. Yeah, cool. We can do that, too. All right. Uh, Apple and Microsoft are safe bets. I agree with those. Uh, Ivan needs help with number seven. All right, let's do it. Okay. Okay. It says, uh, an $800 computer depreciates at a rate of 20% per year. That's generous. Um, if a student uses the laptop for four years, approximately how much is the computer worth after four years? Round your answer to the nearest hundredth. Okay, I love these types of questions. These are always really fun. One second, let me get the screenshot of it. Let me get this so it's not so crazy. So there, there's a way to do this. High energy phenomology or like, oh, CP violation. Okay, oh, you're one of the particle guys. <laughs> like LHC and stuff. I, I, have a, I have a buddy over in Sweden that works there. It's crazy stuff. I think Chicago used to have an, a, a cyclotron as well. Fermilab, Fermilab used to have one. And then they were supposed to build the one in Texas, but that was a whole scandal. I think Clinton killed it. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, an $800 computer depreciates at a rate of 20% per year. Okay, this is cool. So something is going down by 20%, all right? If something is worth 20% less, um, what percentage of its original value... Oh, Fermilab, nice. Yeah, Chicago, right? Fermilab's Chicago, I think, yeah? 
Um, so one K, let's let's do this. Uh, yeah, when the SSE was yeah canceled, I went to software. Yeah, I think they filled it with concrete or something. It's terrible. It was it was gonna be dope, dude. I'm I'm from Texas. I went to University of Texas for my undergrad. I did my PhD at UCLA. So like, but I I Texas, yeah. That's some cool stuff. Okay, let's think about this one uh, K. I have something, and I tell you that a year later, it's worth 20% less, okay? What percentage of its original value is it now worth, okay? You can kind of see this, right? Let, let's say I have something that's 100%, and then I say, okay, cool, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dock you, like, 20%. I don't know, you know. Uh, I was plasma physics experimental. Um, if you drop 20% of something's value, you now have 80% of what you started with, okay? This kind of goes into percentages, uh, which I don't know if you've covered yet, but a lot of times we say, like, you'll see this with coupons, for instance, like, take 20% off, take 30% off this, blah, 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 blah. These are all um, common things you see in everyday life, right? But if something drops 20%, you say that it's 80% of its original value. So I say 80% of its original value. Okay. Uh, and so what's happening when something de depreciates 20% every year, it's that every year it is worth 80% what it was the year before. Yeah, I just posted it because it was unusual answer I didn't get. Okay, well, let's look at this. All right. So here's what you do. So, for instance, if I have an $800 computer and then um, after a year I want to know how much it's worth, how, how would I do that? It's $800, right? Now it's only worth... Um, eighty percent of what it used to be. How how would I calculate that? Good. Eight hundred times point eight. Yeah. Good. E exactly, dude. Right. Okay. So you do eight hundred times point eight, right? And that's going to get you six hundred and forty dollars. Okay, so that's six hundred and forty dollars after the first year. All right. Now let's say we go. So this was year one, right? Now let's go to year two. So year two, it's going to depreciate another twenty percent. So it's only going to be worth eighty percent of what it is. So that's going to be multiplied by another eighty percent, point eight. Okay. Um, and then that one I kind of need a calculator because I can't do six forty times point eight in my head. Uh. That's going to give me, uh, five, oh, I, sh I should know that, 512, that's a nice number. Uh, okay, so this is now going to get me to 512. Now, what, what I want you to notice here, 1K, is notice after year two, this 640 we had here was the amount after year one, and this amount was equal to 800 times 0.8. So really what we did in order to figure out the amount after year two is we did 800 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 again. That, that's what this is. Well, here, let me, let me move this, change the colors. Okay. And then, right, for year three, you're going to do another 0 0.8. Yeah, do you see how this is working? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, this is the, oh... I did it all at PNCE. What is PNCE? What does that mean? So then this is uh, 800 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8. Oh, you only did it once. Yeah, yeah. You got to. Okay, so yeah, this is what I want to show you guys. Okay, this is the cool thing. So all of this, right? You see how this is the same thing as 800 times 0 0.8, and then this is squared? Where this is 800 times 0.8, right? But now it's to the third, okay? So if you ever want to know how much this thing is worth at, like, year N, it's going to end up being 800 times 0.8 to the N, okay? So this is how much it's worth after N years, okay? Okay? This is where this formula comes from. I'm sure everyone learns this, right? Which is that the amount is equal to the principal, and then they say 1 plus R to the T. 
where this is like the rate uh, of increase or decrease. This is the principal. This is the start. And then this is the time, which in this case was N. Okay. So this one, right, this ended up being, okay, cool. This was 800 times 1. The rate was down 20%, so that's negative 0.2. And then the time here, whatever, you could say is like 6. This ends up getting you the same thing. 800. 1 minus 0.2 is 0.8, all to the 6th. So that's that's what you need to do in order to figure out how much it's worth. Sorry, we went off of a tangent here. Yeah. Oh, we want it after 4 years? Oh, I thought it was after 6. Okay, whatever. I thought this was a, a MacBook Pro. I forgot Windows laptops don't last more than like 3 years. <laughs> I hate iPhones, by the way, just just for like clar clarification. But Apple does make really good hardware in terms in terms of laptops. Yeah. So this is what you get. Um, you can plug it into a calculator. You get eight hundred times point eight all to the fourth, uh, and that's going to get you three twenty seven point six eight. Cool. Does that make sense there, 1K? That should be the right answer, right? Is that what you got? I don't know. I'm trying to look at this. Yes. All right. Awesome. Good. Great job. What's up, Haunted? Steph on disk. Notation check work. I asked to use implicit differentiation on that. Okay. Ooh, that's a mess. How many derivatives do you have to do? Just one? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's an interesting. Yeah, okay. What's up? What's up, Haunted? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Cool. Awesome. Great. All right. Awesome. Um, sweet. I only have one investing account. Bro said we are his expenses. You, got, you all are my expenses. Well, one of my expenses. I have many expenses. <laughs> uh, can I claim you all as dependents on my taxes? That would be nice. <laughs> okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, all right. Let's see. I said I'd help out... Um, uh, critical with his computer science question. Um, let me let me check this real quick because uh, Taunted is a new student. This will take me two seconds. Like, let me just check this real quick. Uh, and then I need to find it. Does anyone in the chat know a good online C++ compiler? That would help me. Because um, I, I want to show him how to code something really quickly in C++. But I don't want to, like, install... A, a, a IDE or something on my on my desktop. I, I there should be something. I know there is for Python. Um. Okay. Uh. Okay. One second. So you're just asking for dy dx. Uh. When x ln y plus y ln two. Hello. What's up, Ethan? Good to see you, bro. Hey, uh, I just heard that you wanted some C++ compiler. Yeah, do you have an online one that you use? Yeah, I you know what I'm talking about? Mainly. Yeah, but not yeah, like Jupyter I mean, or something. What's it called? Jupyter what? No, no, it's okay. What, what's the compiler you use? What is it called? Um, I don't know if you were referring to the same one I use, but it's not Ruplet anymore. I don't use Ruplet anymore. Okay. Can you post a link to it so I can yeah. so I can check it out? It's just called online GDB. One second. Well, that's Java. No, it can. You can choose different. Um, oh, really? What? You can choose different languages. Oh, what? Like, oh, Ruby. hell yeah! Thank you so much, Ethan. Yeah, I, I, I did this with you at one point, right? Yeah, you did. Oh, so hell yeah! The, 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 okay, critical. This, this is great. Yeah, thank, remember. thank Ethan for this critical because we're gonna use this after this question. I'm gonna use and, this to go and, and see. Replets, they, Unlike um, AI, there, there comes an advantage and disadvantage if you consider them that. But um, how do I say it? You see, it, it can it can actually give you the the, the code for C plus plus. Yeah. The, oh, yes, it'll or, translate it. It'll translate it. You think? That's kind of kind of cool. Yeah, but but like I was saying, uh huh. Unlike Replit, it doesn't have AI just somehow guessing the lines for you. Yeah, you I don't like that. Yeah, the autocomplete. Yeah, that stuff's annoying. <laughs> And then the next, but the other disadvantage is that you can't really tell if there's an error unless you actually run the compiler. 
Yeah, oh, you have to run here. it. That's called debugging. That's a whole skill in itself as, as a computer programmer, being able to debug, uh, which, you know, I, I have some tricks on it. Right, but, nice. But yeah, that, that's what I have. And speaking I, of C++, you know, yeah, what's up? I have a test based on that tomorrow. Oh, okay. Well, if you wanna I mean, if you wanna stick around while I code some C plus plus with uh, Critical later, um, I can probably answer some questions um, before on, your test. It's based on. Sorry, yeah, sorry for interrupting, but no, you're it's okay. Based on like, two, it's based on two uh, topics. Okay. Something called logical operators and random numbers. Okay. That shouldn't be too hard. No, not really. It's just when they try to. It in the test, they kind of have it worded differently. Then, yeah, tests are mean. <laughs> they're mean. Tests are mean. Uh, where's my one sec? I want to, I want to find this also for uh, haunted. Uh, where is this actually? Video I just before? realized, um, I wanted to tell you that I just got back my math physical test paper today. How'd it do? How'd you go? Uh, didn't I just already show you on the online version? I got 100. You got 100, nice, dude. But, I mean, I could, I could just take a picture of it and then send it to you really quick. Yeah, send it to me, dude. I'll... Oh, I think I think you showed it to me earlier. Here, one sec. I'm gonna give this that to haunted, on haunted as well. One sec, haunted. Where's haunted? haunted? That was online, but this is the physical paper. Oh, you have the physical. Yeah, DM it to me, uh, and I'll, I'll 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 check it out in the stream. Let me let me help haunted real quick with this question, um, and then we'll talk during C++. Cool. All right, so haunted, I'm gonna help you out. Uh, I'm just, yeah, I'm just giving you that YouTube short because that's one of my most popular YouTube shorts on how to do implicit differentiation. Um, and it, it, I have a method, which I think will make this easier than the way that you're having to do it. So I'm going to show you my method. I know how this is working. You're, you're taking derivatives specifically with respect to X. And so anytime you have a Y, you call it dy dx. And every, anytime you have an X, you just is dx dx, which is just one. But sometimes this can get complicated with the algebra. And I get confused all the time, especially with product rules, with which one I'm taking the derivative of. So I'm going to show you my like little trick. And we'll see if we get the same answer. We probably do. Um, okay, but you're right. There are, uh, there are two things happening here, right? There's the ln rule that's happening, and then there's also a product rule, okay? So here I have the derivative of this. Um which is two things multiplying each other. And so here's my trick. Anytime I take the derivative of something, I'm going to write what that variable was. So for instance, if I took the derivative of x, I'm going to write what that is, and then I'm going to write dx. And if I take the derivative of y, I'm going to write what that is, and then write dy. Uh, the simple example, I'll show you real quick. So if I have x squared plus y squared is equal to 2, this would end up being the derivative of x, right, which would be 2x, and then I'll put a dx. And then the derivative here would just be 2y dy. And then the derivative of 2 is just 0. And then I end up rearranging things to eventually just get dy over dx. That, to me, it's, it's a little simpler. Um, you tell me if you like it, Haunted. Um, so uh, let's do it. So here I got two things. I got this and this. Product rule, right? Derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first. So the derivative of the first thing, x, that's just 1 times the second. That's ln of y. And when we did this, we took the derivative. I Yeah, so I'll show you it. So this I'm going to write as being uh, dx, right? Because I took the derivative of the first thing, which was x, times the second, ln of y, and then dx. And then this is plus the derivative of the second thing, right? The derivative of ln of y is 1 over y times the derivative, uh, times times the first thing, which is just x, okay? So that's what we're just going to write x. And then we're like, okay, cool. But when I was doing this, I took the derivative of a y thing. So I'm going to write that as dy. And then let's go here. Again, derivative of the first, derivative of y is just 1. And then we have ln of x. And then because we took the derivative of the first thing, which was y, I'm going to write dy. And then it's plus the derivative of the second thing, which is ln of x. So that's going to be 1 over x times the first, which is just y. And then when I was doing this, right, I took the derivative of ln of x, so I'm going to write dx. 
and then this is all equal to zero because derivative of two is zero. All right. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group anything that has dy's in it and group anything that has dx's in it together. Okay. So good. You following so far? Yeah. This is basically the same as what you're doing. The only difference here is instead of dx, you would you would leave this and then you would write these as dy dx and then you would write these as dy dx. Um, I just find sometimes that the, the math is trickier to deal with. And it's, it's, it's especially hard with the product rule because I forget which one, like, I'm taking the derivative of. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to group these two. So that's going to be um, x over y plus ln of x. And that's all times dy, right? And let's remember, this is zero. And then this is going to be... Uh, y over x on here i should i should keep these as the same color let me, let me do this let me do this one sec and then this is going to be y over x ln of uh, plus ln of y and then that's going to be a dx and then this is all equal to zero right so then the last thing i do or the second last thing, is I'm going to put all of this on one side. I'm going to leave this on one side. So now I'm just left with this is equal to the negative of this. Okay. Let me move it around. And then I'm going to move the dx under this, and then I'm going to move this under this. So that's going to get me dy over dx is equal to negative uh, all this stuff, right? Divided by this stuff. And I think that's it. Interesting, you have a bunch of x squareds. Are you taking the second derivative? Oh, what's going on in your question? <laughs> yeah, so th this should be it. This should be the answer. Unless I, like, seriously messed something up. I don't think so. Let me see what happened with you. Because this looks way too complicated. Uh, oh, no, that's okay. You just multiplied by xy. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, we got the same answer. This is the same. Y yeah, you, you can multiply the top by x over x, and then you can... Yeah, yeah, whatever. Your teacher wants you to? Wait, what's wrong with this? I say simplification is in the eyes of the beholder, right? I feel like this is also, like, simplified. Jeff will back me up on this. Like, what is simplification? Anyways, yeah, it, we get the same answer, I think. Uh, but not quite, actually. You have a minus sign somewhere. Uh, one, one sec. Criti uh, I said I'd do criticals, Ace. Sorry, I gotta do, I gotta do crits. He's been waiting for a bit. Uh, let me see. Where did you get the minus from? Oh, what? what? Oh, oh, minus, minus. Uh, interesting. We're off by a minus sign somewhere. Blue. This is always the worst, like hunting for minus signs. Yeah, okay, cool. Oh, interesting. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Here. I don't think there's supposed to be a minus here. I think this is positive. Yeah. Yeah, this should be a positive, not a minus x. And then... So this should be positive. That's that's your only mistake there. Haunted. But you should get the same answer. Cool. Does that make sense? No, yeah, this is, some people, like, yell at me at the math community, they're like, <laughs> like, what are you doing, bro? Like, this is the wrong way to teach it. Imagine dividing by dx. And I'm just like, whatever, it works. <laughs> and, um, as evidence, my teacher would take half credit for off of that, thanks. Okay, cool. Great. Awesome. Okay, cool. I'm glad it made sense to you. Great job. 
Um, come on by anytime. Welcome to the Discord. You also get points for asking questions in our stream. Um, some people don't know this. Let's see, Steph is your name, Steph? Yeah. Yeah, it's real. Uh, just a little quick little plug about what we do. So yeah, we're a nonprofit um, that we help out kids, math and science, but we also incentivize you guys to do well in your classes and stuff. So um, once you join our Discord, you'll see that we have a bunch of different like channels and stuff. And um, these are ways that you can earn points. So one of the big things we have is of course asking questions. You get points for that. Also, we have like a physical education challenge. So if you show me that once per week, uh, if you show me during the week, you at least have four days where you have over 7,000 steps. So that gets you points. Um, if you show us that you're getting good grades in your classes, so someone, yeah, was like, look, I got, look, Dr. Gold, I got good grades in my classes. I'm like, cool. That also gets you points. Um, and then also following the stream, there's a bunch of, bunch of ways. But at the end of the day, if you complete enough of these challenges, which some students do, they speed run this. They'll do it in like four days because they know exactly like what to do or, or they have had friends that tell them what to do. Uh, we end up uh, buying you prizes. So, and then some people tell me like that I'm a liar or something. And I say no. I have I have the receipts, dog. So these are all the screenshots of. I need to update them from this year, but these are all the different gift cards, prizes, uh, and stuff that we bought students. So it's it's real. It's not a scam. Come by, get help. Ethan's won some stuff. <laughs> Cosmic says I can indeed confirm, bro is legit. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so I'm taking a physics C and Calc AB, so I will not be showing good receipts. It's okay. Let me help you out, especially with physics C. That's a hard class. Um, and um, I run free AP courses later in the year, so if you, you know, stick around or, like, you know, um, look, for, look for that later in the year, we have a whole free course that we run to get you prepped for, for AP Calc. Yeah. Yeah, A says I second that. Yo, Gold, can you do my next? Let me let me do critical. Critical's been waiting like two days for me to do this. Let me do let me this is gonna take a little bit of time, guys. I'm sorry, but like I wanna make sure I, I help critical. Um because he hasn't gotten help in a bit. Um what's up, Ethan? Yeah, I wanted to say I already sent the map that's in the um DM. Nice, dude. I'll check it out. Okay, you're very welcome, right. Haunted. Yeah, I'll check it out, Ethan. Or where well, I see I see it right here. Right? Is this, is this your test? Nice. 56 out of 56, 100. Nice, dude. That's awesome, dude. Great job. Great job on your test, dude. Hell yeah. That was Perfect like score, dude. Of... That was not too much, actually. It was just pretty easy. Okay. Um, now it's C++ next. Yes, we're going to do C++ right now. Let me, let me see. Um, I got to find his prompt. Okay, this is it. This is it. This is the prompt. So let's pull up the prompt. All right, uh, okay, so we need to use nested loops to monitor the weather in a valley. Um, okay, so here's what happens, is, is that someone is taking all the data from a weather station and they're putting it in for three different stations. And then we want the code to determine which station had the hottest temperature on average, okay? So before I ever start something like this, um, um, <laughs> they're like, it's me, it's me, it's me. Don't worry. <laughs> I, uh, well, whoever, it's it's the order. Whatever the order is of 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 the questions, guys, I'll get to you. But let, let me help critical. Okay, writing pseudocode. That's what I'm I'm talking about, right? Real quick, pseudocode. Pseudocode is important because it allows us to logically kind of um think about where we want to write the code. Like, what's the logic? What's the algorithm we want to do here? Okay. Uh. I did this yesterday, but I just cleared all my pages. I'll do it again for you. It's okay, because it's, it's better. You know, people, there are new people here. Um, okay, so it says, read the inputs produced by each station. Each sta station is input at once, day by day. Each station is input at once. So I think they do like station one, station two, and station three. I think that's what they do, right? So what we're going to want uh, is, and there's a couple ways to do this. Because I could say, like, Station 1, Station 2, Station 3, and just see which one's the biggest. Um, but that requires using arrays, and I don't, think we, I, I don't think your teacher wants you to use arrays. I think they want you to come up with some clever 
for loop logic in order to do it, which is okay. You can do it. All right. So here's what here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna come up with like some variables. We're gonna say station max. We're, we're gonna say station total. Let's do that. Um, we're gonna say global total. And I'm trying to think what else we want to do. Um, max station. I think these are three variables that we're going to want. Yeah, nested for loops. Yeah, these are three things. Okay. And then it kind of helps to say what these things are going to do. So this is going to um, say, um, or here, we're going to say global, global max. So this is going to be the maximum temp so far. This is going to be the total temp for a station. And then this is going to tell us um, which station is currently which station currently has the max. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that's what we want. Total. T so maximum, maximum total temp. Or let me let me move it over. So, and then I kind of write like what we're gonna want to do loop wise, right? So I'm gonna want to loop through the stations. Okay. That's gonna be some sort of loop. Okay. And then I'm gonna want to loop through the days okay and then here and here i'm going to want to say for like each day add the temp to station total and then after we've added all the ones in the day the next thing i want to do is is compare compare station total to the global max total so far does this make sense critical like how how i'm thinking about this like pseudocode wise like this is the nested for loops by the way cuz we got to go through all the stations and then for each station we have to add in all the days and then after I've added in all the days, I want to compare the temperature of that station to what the max has been so far. If if the max that this station has is bigger than the max so far, then this is the new max. And if it's not, then we move on to the next one. Yeah, well, we're going to have to declare these variables. So let's do that. So here, we're going to do that in this code here. Um... This is weird. Is this how is this how st is this really how this works? I thought it was just c out. What's stdc out? What? Uh, and then this is just run. Oh wait, that's like, I actually kind of know that a little bit. Um, Why is there an std in there? What? Why do you need std in there? Um, basically, it's kind of like a complicated reason. But um, mm -hmm. in C plus plus, if you okay, hear me out. I can't see your screen, but. If okay. You can just type in after include IO stream. Type in using namespace std. Oh, oh, very cool, dude. Well, skip a line to that. But press like enter in between the IO stream. Press enter. Maybe press enter. And no, 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 no. Oh, oh, wait. Um. Oh, before the in main. Oh, no, no, oh, no, no, no. I, I, I know what you mean. You mean like here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, okay. Semicolon, okay. Semicolon. Oh, I didn't know that. All right, that cool. now, now you can use C out, but uh, don't forget the best. using namespace std. Well, it's oh, oh, you're sorry. Not this, this, anything for ins. Yeah, good. Now, awesome. Okay, thank you, See? thank you. Yeah, yeah. See, it's just a complicated reason, but now you can just type in C out or std. I like that. C yeah, C in. That's what I. That's what I figured I was gonna do. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's, now you can like let's that, declare that, a loop. I know a little short. So int station total. Uh, and then 
<laughs> like before, right? We have to make these all like really big negative numbers because unfortunately you could have negative temp negative temperatures. Integer global max equals negative 1000. And then here we'll just say integer max station uh, equals negative one. That's okay. It's just initializing it to something so that we don't have, uh, we haven't found the, the actual values for them yet. Okay, so now I'm here. It's four, uh, what is it? Integer station equals one station is less than or equal to three station plus plus. I believe that's how that works. Okay, so this is going through all the stations, and then we're going to have to say for integer day equals one, day is less than or equal to seven, day plus plus. Okay, let's so give another one of those. All right, so uh, when we look at a new station, I need the station total to, to get reset. So we're going to do that. So we're going to say, we're going to... Set the station total to that. Uh, or no, I'm going to set it equal to zero. That's what I'm going to do. Right, this should be set to zero. That's okay. Yeah, the global max I have to set to negative 1,000. Okay. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to see in. It's, how do you do see in? Is it the this thing? Or is it this way? Let's see in. Uh, oh, and then we have to have this. We have to say uh, integer... Um, day temp uh and whatever don't don't need to initialize it to anything yet okay uh how do we use cn cn with uh with c plus plus i just need to see how it works oh cn wait wait not something okay got it got it all right it's that way and then it's the other way okay. i think it's cn cn yeah. Yeah, and then it's this way. So day temp. Okay, because that's going to take in the day temp. Okay. And then we're going to say station total has to add, right, is going to be uh, plus equals day temp. Okay. So that's that that part of our code there. Critical. Do you understand this so far? That part is, is, is going to just keep uh, inputting in the, the day temps. Yeah. Beautiful code. Right. Thank you. I appreciate the Cosmo. I think I make pretty code. The hardest thing is the algorithm, honestly. It's coming up with the algorithm that's hard, and then the coding is like, whatever. Um, so here, if we wanted to test this, and this is an important thing, guys. Uh, it's good as you're writing code to check along the way. Otherwise, if you get to the end and hit run, I guarantee you it's not going to work. <laughs> like, it's better to do it in increments to make sure parts of it work. So what I'm going to do here first is I want to make sure that my code runs and that it can input day temps, okay? Uh, and then here, I'm gonna have it just do this. C out. Um, station, uh, station total. Okay. Because I will forget something, all right. And I, I'm setting it to, to there only being two days to make it like faster, okay? So let's run this, let's see if it runs. Okay, cool, good so far, so let's do it. Let's say two. Three tells me the total five. Cool, right? And then let's say six, seven tells me the total 13, seven, eight tells me 15. Awesome, cool, awesome. It works. There's some weird thing with it not going to the next line. I, that's the NBSP I need, I think, or whatever it's called. Wait, I, think it's, I think it's supposed, I think, I don't know what you're supposed to oh, do. Oh, add an end L uh, yeah, like this. Yeah, exactly. Is that how I add the end L? Oh, no, 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 you have to do the C out things. The, uh, oh, that's annoying, dude. Like that? Is that what I have to do? <laughs> well, I think you have to put it with, within that line. Within the, 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 yeah, between the lines that, that don't have an end. Okay, that's fine. No, watch this, watch this. This, this should work. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. No, 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 this should work. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, I, I, I see what he's saying. He's saying this. There we go. That's not what I mean at all. I mean, like, just the the lesson sign and end got you. Got to you. end of for, got the, you. Um, got you. for the responses. Let's see, if that, let's see if that runs. Okay. One, two, 
three, cool. Three, four, seven, five, six, eleven. Oh, you can't really see that. Sorry. Well, it's kind of cut off. Yeah. Do you see at the bottom how I'm running that? Okay, critical, because that that shows me that it that it is totaling the stations correctly. Okay. Awesome. So I don't need this code anymore. Uh, what's comment out? Is it double dash? What is it? Uh, is it this? No. What is it? Uh, oh, it's it's slash. Slash star. Oh, uh oh, that's too much. Oh, it's that slash. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm gonna yeah, I'm just taking out the code there. Okay, cool. All right. So um, then what we need to do is we need to compare the total we got for that station to what the global total is. So I'm gonna say if station total is greater than or equal to um, global max. Uh, global, can I, yeah, there we go, cool. Then what I wanted to do is I wanted to set max station equals station. That tells me that like, wait, what? No, equals station. Equal station. So now the max station is the current the current station we're at. That's the indice there, and then also um, global max is equal to station total. So what that does is it says, okay, cool. I found a bigger one. The max station is now this station, and now the max global, the global max, like the biggest the biggest temperature so far that I have to beat, is now. Uh, whatever the total was for that station. Okay, cool. So then, wh what does it need to output at the end? Uh, which station registered the hottest average? Okay. So I'll be, I'll like, cool. Station. Max station. Uh, okay. All right, cool. Uh, where is it? Let's see, had the max average. Yeah, what do they want the output to be? I see that that's the input. Okay, so here, let's just try this for just having two days. Uh, I don't need to say this. Okay. So let's run this. Uh, okay, max station was not declared. Max station? Oh! <laughs> Sorry, my... There we go. This should, this should run now. Okay, here we go. So watch. So one, two. Nothing, right? Okay. So that was station one, which had an average of three. Let's have the other one have a bigger average. So let's say this one has an average of seven. Cool. And let's have the other one have an average of zero. So zero, zero. Station two had the max average. So this code works. And then if you wanted to say, you could say see out... The max average was, and then, uh, can I put math statements in C outs? Can I say global max, global max, uh, divided by seven? Uh, I think I have to then say, well, it's, uh, Use of an undeclared identifier station. Well, yeah, you uh no, you, you create station here. It's part of the it's part of the for loop. Yeah. Let me see if this works actually, I'm curious. Uh yeah, okay, you can't do this. Uh, <laughs> Is it double? Yeah, right? Double or DBL? Is that what they say? No, double. equals uh thanks yeah global max divided by seven i think i think i'm allowed to do that right okay let's see if that runs okay cool one two cool six three what well, i don't know cool station three had the max the average was three Mm, well, that's not right. 
Is this where you have to like say <laughs> divided by 7.0? <laughs> I always hate when you have to do this. One sec. Let me try this. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The key. You have to put the seven point zero here. This is a tricky thing in code, actually, because it'll just start casting things as integers, and it'll start getting rid of um, the decimals. Yeah. Right. It's it's super annoying. Cosmic. <laughs> I always hate when it does that. Okay. All right. This should work, dude. This is code, bro. This this this, this is great. This code is beautiful. If it doesn't work, then, you know, whatever. It's it's because of whatever the, the stuff is that you're using. There we go. Uh, un unidentified... Yeah, see, this is what I don't like about computer science courses that are graded with, like, some fucking computer, is that clearly I run my code and it works, but however this, like, grader thing is running the code isn't correct, because it has to, like, somehow, I don't know, it's, it's like, it's like, how it, I don't know how it inputs the data. Yeah, the, grade, the grader has a test case, but how does the grader know what to do for like C input and stuff. Like how does it know when to input things? Cause like I just did it, right? I just literally ran this code and it worked. Oh, oh, change this to seven too, sorry. Sorry, yeah, we gotta change it to seven days. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay, now that, sh now that should work yeah the un the use of undi undeclared identifier station okay fine well if they really want that here just do this say integer station <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because they don't see that it's being declared in the for loop. Which is dumb, because it compiles. Like, fuck you. <laughs> if they really want you to whatever declare it, just declare it up here. And then, and then don't put it here. And this will work. Cool. Done. Yeah, works. All right. Try that. So here, just just take take station, get rid of the int, and then just declare it before the for loop. Both are valid. I don't I don't know why the thing doesn't work. Should work. It literally it literally works right here when I do it. Um, um but okay. You didn't cool. talk for me while I was gone, did you? No, I didn't. You're good. You're good. Here, let me help out one of the other students. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, I hope hope that makes sense. Critical. Yeah, keep let, keep me updated. Keep me updated on that shitty grading thing. Uh, let me see who I'm helping out now. Oh, equity, equity, you're next. Sorry, equity is equity is here. And then Ace, I got you, Ace. Okay. Yeah. Try. Does it work? Critical? I mean, tell me if it works. I'll find a way for it to work. I'm just, and I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at your teacher. I hate how computer science has turned into this lazy piece of shit where they just have these computer things grade it. What what's the error it's giving? Unident un undeclared identifier station. Like it is declared. Like what this it's it's com it's it is it is completely declared. It's, did you declare it up here? The other option is like <sighs> check I result number three I don't know. O of one. The expression did not match case. What? Negative one thousand one. What? <laughs> oh man. Oh, you know what it is? Okay, okay. Here. Uh, well, so this is my question: is like, what format do they want the output in? I have to know what format they want. It looks like they're taking the output and they're casting it as an integer. Cause minus one five seven isn't that outside the bounds of like. 
Yeah, I have to know what they want for the output. Do they want you to just... You could just do this. So I instead of having all this stuff here, which is nice, right? You could get rid of it. And then just have it do this. Have it do C out... Um, max station. Just have it do that. Maybe they just want an integer. Maybe they just want integer for like which one it is. I think this is nice because it tells me which one had the max and what the average was. Okay, but if you do that, does it still say max station is negative 1,574,400? What? What? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what those words mean. <laughs> Input, expected output, actual output, that. Yeah, does bro have examples of how the test case is output? Yeah, seriously, Cosmic? Yeah, dude, dude this is why, I, yeah, yeah. Go to your teacher. <laughs> Go to your teacher, show them this code, and be like, yo, bro, I want you to be a fucking teacher and tell me why it doesn't work. <laughs> Instead of, don't bang your head against why whatever this god-awful grading thing they're using for your code is is not working. Like, go to your teacher and ask them. Show them this code and be like, it's... And show them that, like, if you literally run it, you get the you get it, an answer that should be correct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would be great. Answer. Yeah, yeah. So Cosmic says, my teacher gives the expected output in the command line. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I would need that. You know, um, that there were, I know that there are two types of errors in coding. Oh, oh, you know what the error is? Oh, 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 wait, whoa, 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 whoa. One second, critical. I got it. I got you. Um, Hello, these all need to be doubles. These all need to be doubles. Sorry. Yeah, one sec, critical. One sec. You're good. Uh, double. Yeah. Ch change these to doubles. Yeah, you can leave you can leave station as an as an integer, but change everything else to a double. No, no, no. Sorry, max station can be an integer. That's fine. Yeah, try 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 this. Yeah. I should have read that. Now I see the input. Your teacher is is having it input decimals, which I don't know. I thought I thought they'd be inputting just you know regular ass integers. That should work. Let me let me make sure this works real quick, and then I'll do equities. Let's see one. Cool. Uh, what does it say the output is now? Because <laughs> when I see that actual input as being like negative one, what, 15,744,000, that tells me that it's doing some weird thing, typecasting uh, a double down to an int. Also, one sec. I just want to see one sec. <sighs> that reads as input the values produced by each station. Yeah, it should be that. <laughs> What's up, Dennis? Okay. Okay, go ask your teacher. Go ask your teacher. All right. I hope that helps you. All right, let me move on. Another student's... Um, okay. Let's see. Um, let me... Is equity or ace here? Equity or ace here? I'm gonna try to code this lol. Yeah, well, there, my code's up there if you want to. It's kind of fun. Ace is here. What's up, ace? All right, let's do yours. All right. Yeah, you're welcome, dude. Uh, 
What is- what are you in my s oh, Lost in Saga, right? That's you? Critical? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Alright, let's see. Okay, you are cutting the- the estate lawn with a push lawn mower of mass 12.5 kilograms. You exert a force of 115 newtons, and you experience a frictional force of 42. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, as well as a resistive force of 58 newtons due to this arm. Determine the acceleration of the mower. Okay, cool. Free body diagram. Yes, free body diagrams are important. We love free body diagrams. Perfect. Okay. So this has a mass of 12.5 kilograms, which, you know, anytime you have something with mass, always going to have a force of gravity downwards, right? And this is going to equal to 12.5 m times g, which is 9.8. Okay. You exert a force. We're going to say the force goes to the right. So this is the force. We're going to say FP, force pushing. And that's going to be 115 newtons. And you experience a, a frictional force. So that's coming backwards. Sometimes we call this like uh, FK. That's equal to 42 newtons. As well as a resistive force. So we can say F resistive of uh, 58 newtons. This is not drawn to scale. Okay. Determine the acceleration of the mower included for... You know how to do this, Ace, right? It's pretty easy. No? Should know how to do this. Sum of forces, right? Equals mass times acceleration. And we only care about the thing in the X direction right now. Technically, there is a normal force, Ace. Which is the same as this. Unless you end up pushing downwards. So this is a common question. is like pushing down on the mower. Um, because then you have some of the force contributing to down, which is going to make more force on the normal going up. So that's the next step. This is easy. This is a very easy question for you. They're eventually going to change it so that this pushing force is at an angle. You're going to have to break it into components. And then also they're probably going to give you a coefficient of friction. So you have to solve for that friction based on the normal force. That's what's coming up. Okay. Uh, yeah, Cosmic. Dude, I asked the same question, bro. Like, yeah, what are the constraints? Like, what am I allowed to code? What am I not allowed to code? It's so open-ended, bro. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So some of the forces. So we got 115 going to the right. Minus 42. Minus 58. Equity, I'll do yours next. You're right here. Um, and then that's equal to the mass, which is 12.5 times the acceleration. So this isn't too bad. We can do this real quick. Very easy. Let's do 115 minus 42 minus 58 is that. 15 divided by 12.5. You should get acceleration is equal to 1.2 meters per second squared yeah is that is that the correct answer Ace? <sighs> oh calculation error all good dude nice all right great yes nice job All right, where was equity's question? Equity. Oh, is that a copier's in equity yet? Yeah, good. Yeah, let me know. It's going to get harder because um, you're going to start doing angles and you're going to have to use, like, FS Max and FS. Like, that's going to happen eventually. Yeah, thanks, Olaf. Yeah, thanks, Olaf. People say I look like Olaf or I talk like him. Ah! I'm not sure that's good for my Riz, dude. What? You might just put to me like, yo, uh, some, some people say I uh, talk like Olaf. <laughs> what? All right. Uh, all right. Equity. What's up, dude? Where's the boy? Is he in here? Is he? Oh yeah, he's in. He's in the. He's in the. In the thing. Nice. Yeah. What up, dude? Yeah, it's cool. It's chemistry. All right. The element silver. Uh oh, the number two color. Anytime I see someone wearing like all silver, I'm like, bro, why? Why are you wearing a second place color? Like, it's okay. <laughs> like, gold is gold is first for a reason. Uh. With an electron configuration that is an exception, uh-oh, to the to the filling order. With 47 electrons, what electron configuration do you s expect to see from the filling order? This is cool. I actually like this. This is a very good question. Um, periodic table. 
Away! Here we go. Copy this. Okay. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. It's coming in. Alright. So, AG is right... Where is that AG? Where is that pesky silver? Oh, it's right here. Uh, so, interesting. I wonder... Am I allowed to use noble gas notation? I think I should be able to. Because otherwise, it's going to be a pain in the ass. So, this is what it is. Okay. So, there's a thing called noble gas notation. Which means you start at, like, wherever the, the, the closest noble gas is. And then you, like, move along the, the things. So, usually it's, like, 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, 3D10, 4P6. This would be 5S2. But instead of writing all those other ones, I can just write Krypton. So, you can say, like, just Krypton. And then you can start there. And so, if we start a Krypton, then I... So, I don't know. Have you seen this before, Equity? I, I, I know you're not taking chemistry right now, so, like, let me know how much of this you know and how much you don't know, because I, I can explain it to you. Like, maybe you've never seen this before, and I, you know, it could be a good look. I want you to learn things, obviously. <laughs> Equity's typing. Oh, you have seen it? Okay, cool. All right. So this is Krypton. Okay. So then the next layer down would be 5S, 5S2, uh, and then it's going to be 4D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 49. 4D9. This would be the expected filling order. Okay. Um, so what ends up happening is... Uh, it's more beneficial to fill this up than to have it, like, kind of unfilled. The trauma's coming back to me. Yeah, I know, dude. <laughs> Chemistry is all exceptions, dude. Okay, so here, I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, so you have 5S, right? Which right now just has, like, electron, electron. And then you have the 4S, which has five little shells. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And so it needs to fill... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, okay, yeah, ten minus one, whatever. So it has to fill nine electrons. This is called Hun's rule. So what it's going to do is going to go one, two, three, four, five. So it always fills out the orbitals in up, 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 up first. Then it starts pairing them off. So then you would have this uh, six, seven, eight, nine, and you have to stop. Okay. Now it turns out. Uh, AG's a weirdo. Who likes silver anyway? Silver sucks. Um. And, for whatever reason, having this one with one missing electron is more unstable than stealing this one, for instance, and putting it over here, and making sure that this is full. Okay? So I think that's what happened. So... Which S orbital will it move from? That's going to be the 5S orbital. It moves from here. Which elect Will the electron be moved into a D or F orbital? Oh, sorry. This isn't 4S. Sorry. This is 4D. So this is a D orbital. And then so then this is the new electron configuration. Okay. Why did you skip the P orbital? No, no, no. It's okay. No, no, no. Valid question. So this is... Yeah, yeah. So when you get... This is weird, right? Because this is like 4S. Right? Right here. This, this is 4S. But then this is 3D. So it, it ends up dropping a number, but it's the next uh, chain in the energy levels. If you want to see a graph for why that is, yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, this is what I want. This Dude, the periodic is, table is dope. Like... Uh, it, 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 it explains, like, so many cool things. I know there are, like, some weird alternative <laughs> ones out there. Like, the one, what's his name that Terrence Howard likes? Like, the spirally, like, watch this one, this one's like, uh, weird periodic table. Yeah, like, bro, these are, these are some periodic tables. <laughs> like, what the, is this like a game of Candyland Dog? <laughs> uh... 
But yeah, some people think like this is a, this looks like weirdly sexual. I don't know about this. Like, looks like a plumbus. Um, right? Yeah, this is apparently a, a, a periodic type of table. This is another one, and then you, here's another one. So there are a lot of weird periodic tables that they they that they have tried out. Yeah, you know. but okay. It's because uh, 4D is less than 5P. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird here, right? So, so look what happens. This is this is the first divide, right? So we go 1S, so 2S, 2P, 3S. Oh, what? Where'd it go? No, come back. Ugh, lost the picture. Come back. Okay, this is it. And then, okay. So it goes 1s, 2s, 2p, right? 3s, 3p, 4s, and then 3d, right? So d here is nestled in between 4s and 4p. That's why. And then it goes 5s, and again, 4d, 5p, 6s. And then you get even weirder, right? Like 4f <laughs> is like slightly there too. Yeah. That's just how it works. Yeah. So, like, technically, these are all in what's called, like, the N equals 3 shell, or N equals 3 orbital, or what is it called? Level? N equals 3 level? How do you calculate these? Uh, experimentally. Uh, okay, so that, that the, you're referring to quantum numbers, okay? Which is N, L, M, M sub S. N refers to this number. L refers to, to right, if it's 0 if it's equal to S. It's 1 if it's equal to P. It's 2 if it's equal to D. It's 3 if it's equal to F. Uh, M sub L, sorry, M sub L, refers to which thing it is here. In this case, it's like negative 1, 0, positive 1. Here it's like negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2. And then this is either just plus or minus a half. That tells you whether it's up or down. Uh, these numbers do not calculate energy. They they don't they don't they don't directly correspond to the energy of an electron. It's just like the address. So a lot of times, for instance, uh, someone will pick an electron. They'll be like, "Oh, hey, what is the what are the quantum numbers for? I don't know, like this electron right here." And you have to be okay. Cool. It's n is equal to four. It's in a d orbital, so that means it's l is equal to two. It's in the uh, the plus one. M sub L, so I can put one there, and then it's down, so it's negative one half. So this is like a way to describe the address of this electron, because as electrons get filled into elements, uh, they fill in different places and orders. So yeah. Uh, but th this energy, like shell, th this this graphic, this is experimentally determined. I'm pretty sure. Or maybe there's some quantum mechanics in it. I don't know. It's probably something. There. Anyways, yeah, good question there, dude. What's up, uh, Thorin? You new to my stream? Who are you, dude? Yeah, come up the stage. What's up, dog? Typical Thorin. What's good? Oh, what's up? To oh, wait. Oh, you're, 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 you used to be Hikaru. I always have to remember, like, what your new name is, dog. I am Hikaru, but I, know, I just but changed my nickname. Okay. What's up, dude? How is Nothing the life? Nothing much. Nothing much? Chill I'm out. good, actually. I just got home from ballet, so... I'm kind of tired. Oh, you're a ballet dancer, right? Is that what you said? Yeah, it's 10 o'clock here. I should go to bed. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for stopping by the stream, dude. Late, late night. You're late welcome. Night. Um, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. All right. When's, when's well, your next performance? When do we get to see you? <laughs> uh, November 24th. Oh, okay. Are they going to stream it? These days, everything's streamed, man. Everything's on YouTube. I can point. send it to you if you want. Yeah, send it me happens. Link. Yeah, yeah. Please, let me All know. Right, right. Yeah, I went to yeah. a funeral over the weekend on YouTube. It was, yeah, super easy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know. Well, it, 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 he was like a friend of a friend, so he was my one of my best friends, like best friend. But I still like I knew the guy because we had partied together a little bit. But yeah, so I was like, oh, I'll, I I wasn't gonna make the drive for this guy's funeral because it was like I don't know, like eight hours away from me. But I was gonna at least pay my respects over YouTube because now they apparently live stream funerals. <laughs> That's know. crazy. Yeah, it was it was wild. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, send me the link, dude. Yeah, I'll have to. Um... Stop by here one day for a yeah a math yeah. question. 
Yeah, let me help you with math, dude. That's what I do. I do it every day. Because I I don't think I've ever asked you to help me with math. <laughs> oh, well then let me yeah, let me help you with math. I help a lot of people with math. Yeah. It's just like algebra one, so it shouldn't be too hard for you. Okay. We got it, dude. It'll be good. Alright, thanks. I appreciate it. It's um exponential functions. We love exponential functions. We love them, dude. Oh, I wish I could say that, but okay. It's okay. We'll learn to love them. Yeah. All right, All good right. night, bro. Have a good night, dude. Peace. Uh, what's up, Dennis? Dennis, you in the house? You in the his house, Dennis? Oh, is this like... Oh, man. oh dude, I'm going to get wrecked on this question, dude. This is why I hated astrophysics. <laughs> I can never figure out the phases of the moon. It's about to be bad. Okay. Uh, suppose you lived on the moon. In this case, you would see the Earth going through phases in your sky. Assume you live near the center of the face that looks towards the Earth. Now suppose people on Earth see a waxing gibbous moon. What phase would you see for Earth? Oh. Oh, man. All right, I need a diagram of a waxing gibbous. <laughs> I don't even know what a... Yeah, dude. Yeah, no, I I want to do this question anyways because I just want to like, yeah, did I I I still don't know what a waxing gibbous is. Is is that the one where it's 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 to the right to the left? Uh, waxing gibbous configuration. Okay. Cool. I think we're getting somewhere. Yeah, these things mess with me, bro. Okay. Like, what? How am I supposed to read this? Excuse me? Like, what? What is this? No, God! <laughs> no, God, please, no! No! <laughs> how am I supposed to read this? Okay, Wax and Gibbous is. Uh, well, here, let's, let's, let's put some colors. Let's do this. It's like this. Yeah? Waxing means bigger, waning means smaller. Uh, so because of the opposite phases, would it be a waning gibbous? Wouldn't it be a waning crescent? Is it the inverse of it? Sorry, is that what it is? Do you see how this is like to the left in blue and then this is like this? Yeah, what do we, what do we mean by, by opposite? I feel like that would be that that's the inverse, I guess. Uh let's actually, let's ask this. Okay, let's say uh phases of moon uh uh and earth seen from each other. I'm just curious. They're opposite. Okay. Yeah, no no look at this. Waxing crescent and waning gibbous. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's it's the inverse. It's this and this. It's a waning crescent. Yeah, that's cool. I could go through the geometry why that is, but let's just trust it how it is. Yeah? That's a cool question. No, I, no, I didn't know that, dude. Now I know next time I go to the moon. I know what y'all are seeing down here on Earth. Cool. That's a fun question. Thanks, Dennis. <laughs> Let me see if Mika is still awake. I'll do the last question today until unless someone else shows shows up and has one real quick. So let's see. They're saying f of x is that. Uh huh. Let me see if Mika's still here. Uh, I got you with the astrophysics. Yeah, please. Let's let's work on my 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 deeply ingrained college undergraduate trauma of astrophysics. It's so funny because my PhD is in plasma physics and plasma physics is sometimes in the astrophysics department because plasma is space. Yeah. But I really didn't. I did really didn't like my astronomy class. <laughs> uh, um, 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 what up? Yeah, what up? There you go. Yeah. What's what's up with this one, Mika? What's what's confusing about it? I see this is f of x. 
and then they do f negative x, right? Oh, which was right when it says or? Oh. Uh, I mean, they're both right, technically. Yeah, when they when they say or, Mika. So, look, the minus sign got... Oh, 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 wait, wait, no, the minus sign shouldn't be doing that. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. All right, let's see, let's see, one sec. Let, let, me, let me make sure it's correct, sorry. Uh, okay, so negative x, negative x, negative x, cool. So then they pull a negative out of this one. You pull a negative out of that one. Uh, yes, okay, cool. And then you pull a negative out of this one. Okay, so it's negative 1 times negative 1. So then these cancel, right? And then these cancel. Oh, awesome, I like that. Okay, cool. So you get f of negative x is equal to this jumbly mess. Um, which is different, Mika, right? This is different than this. If I do negative f of x, then you're right. So it could either be this, and then these all stay the same, or, no, 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 no. It can't be this. Yeah, it can't be this. Oh, I see. You... You said, oh, let me let me put the negative on every single thing. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, that's 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 the thing that's wrong, Mika, right? Whenever you have this minus sign, it only hits one of the, the things that's being multiplied. You can't have it hit every single thing. So it's this one. It's the first one. Does that make sense? And then the first one is, yeah, is the same, well, no, okay. So this is not this, right? Because see how this is plus 3, minus 3, minus 2, plus 2, plus 3, minus 3. These are different. Uh, so this is the neither. This is neither odd or even. Yeah. So I would say... Uh, first one is correct. He says, wait, wait, negative 4x minus 3? No, 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 it's okay. Yeah, which, which minus 4x minus 3 are you talking about, Jeff? You talking about this one? Or different color. Uh, no, you're okay. Oh, and also, also, real quick here, there's, there's not an X here. Yeah, there's no X here. No X. Dude, why is my keyboard double typing, dude? Oh, that's annoying. I'm gonna have to get another keyboard. Oh. Need more donations. I need more, <laughs> I need more hot tub streams. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, so no X there, and then that's the correct one. It's neither on or even. Um, neither odd or even. Uh, yeah, I don't think I canceled another X. There's no more X's in here. Yeah. Here, and then I'll download this. Uh, one sec. Okay, cool. All right. Good job, Mika. Let's put that in. My annoying game is off today. Uh-oh, dude, is it because we're... It's because you're under pressure, dude? Are you under pressure here? Is that why? I'm like, stop. <laughs> okay, good job, Mika. Okay. I think that's all the questions we have for today. Um, so yeah, cool. Let's roll out the stream. All right. Thank you everyone for coming to Office Hours today. Big shout out to um, Neo for doing that. Ivan Neo for doing that huge raid on us. I really appreciate that, man, dude. I'll do another shout out for you, you man. Yeah. I appreciate you bringing other people into our streams. Uh, 
Yeah, we are going to raid Pen Center, of course. So big shout out to Ivan. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. Okay, that's the last stream for uh, the week. Uh, I'm working on getting um, the podcast back up. It's just I, I got to get better at, at getting guests. Um, but anyways, if you want to know whenever our, our next streams are, we have a global calendar um, of all our friends, our awesome, amazing math friends who are doing uh, other similar streams where they help out with, with homework and stuff or just general knowledge of math and science. Um, so those are all our awesome math streamers. And if you want to know um, the schedule, um, it's math streamers. I should make this shorter. That's the link there, which um, has a live updated Google Calendar that has all of our friends that stream here on Twitch in um, math and science. And so you can click on any of these. It'll give you the, the Twitch address. Go give them a follow um, and go learn some stuff. So, you know, if you're a student and you found us today through Twitch, we had some that found us. They're like, oh, I need help with my homework. If I'm not streaming, go check out uh, one of these guys. They're probably streaming and they're, they'd be more than happy to, um, to help you out. Okay. Uh, that being said, our next stream will be Monday. That's going to be at 3 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, come on by, get help with your homework, uh, learn some stuff, lurk, have some fun. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go raid our friend Penn Center, who is learning physics. So if you want to go learn some physics with Penn Center, um, he's a really awesome friend of ours. He's actually the one that came up with that whole idea of let's like making a big calendar. I really appreciate that. Um, so go say hi to Penn Center. Go help him out learning uh, Newton's laws. And uh, we will see you guys on Monday. Okay? All right. Awesome. Okay. So have a wonderful rest of your week. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful Wednesday. We will see you guys on Monday. Peace out. <laughs>